family, they'll run out, as we described. They'll re-establish their honour by coming back into court. The court will immediately transform into being a maritime court, from being a court of the Bar Society. And then he'll, he'll continue as if nothing happened. You have to re-establish again. Your Honour, um, wish to re-estate. You know, I'm a living being. The blood flows. The flesh lives. The judge will freak out then because you've done it. And then you say, you know, I, I, uh, Your Honour, I, I humbly ask for cure and maintenance, not remedy, because it's a maritime court now. Yep. And I really freak out the judge. Now, if it's a federal judge and he's really wanting to nail you and put you in prison, he'll run out again to re-establish honour. He'll come back in for the third and final time. He can't do it anymore. And you'll say, Your Honour, that you know, the wish to establish that uh, I'm a living being, that the blood flows, the flesh lives, uh, and um, we are sovereign, and nothing stands between myself and the divine. And because the judge for the third time has now established his position as a priest under, under canon law, that's it. Game over. Right. But in that simple, simple process, because they've fed so much garbage out to people, there is literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have gone to prison because they thought they were doing the remedy. And they wondered why in the hell it still railroaded through. Yeah, well, if this is the basis of what they're doing, then it sure makes sense uh, exactly what's going on and why people won't get the remedy. And they'll, it's, I look at it like gambling. They'll let the odd person win, so they keep coming back for more. And other yep. people get, this, get the sense that they can win. But the percentages are very small, but it keeps them keeps the business and the courts going anyhow. Like it doesn't the yeah, gambling casino. You know. That's right. It is a casino. And they're making money off it, as you know. They're making money every time someone goes to jail. Sell the bond, make their money. But... Um, just because we've got two new people on the call, just come back to the point that we were saying earlier, because I, unfortunately I, I do have to leave in a second, but um, right now the heart of, of, of what we've discovered is that um, you know we are locked in, in a, a major, major battle with the Bar Association of Pennsylvania, and they are not budging. They are digging in to the end. And the thing they're digging into is they still refuse to acquiesce on jurisdiction. And the reason they're confident is, as I said to you earlier, is canon law. When we say rule of law, rule is canon. A canon is a bar. A bar is a standard. A carpenter is standard. So they're really saying, uh, you haven't challenged canon law. Canon law is considered standard law. We are in honour with standard law, and that's ruled by the Roman cult. So we refuse to yield. But right now, um, I'm about three or four days away from unleashing um, 6,000 canons of canon law, true canon law, based on the Acadia model. Um, and that will consume the Roman cult canon law. And when that does occur, uh, it's game over. They can't claim anymore uh, that they follow canon law. Now, the funny thing is... Because this system is all based on canon law, um, when, when um, we establish that we are canon law, not they, when we hold canon law and we are uh, ecclesiastical officers of canon law, then uh, their whole system, even their name, bar, means that they honour canon law. A bar society is a society, bar is, is, is standard, standard rule, canon, so, really, the, all their uh, rules of office are to obey canon law. So, if if they don't obey canon law, true canon law, they're all in dishonour. Right. So, we're very close to basically breaking their back. That's and when we do, yeah, 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 we're very close. Sounds very exciting indeed. Something's got to break the camel's back here. No well, canon law is it because they can they can they can dig in, um, you know, they can stop playing the game that there's any equity. I mean, what happens is you you narrow the rat into the corner and they'll they'll, they'll stop pretending there's any equity, as you know. There's no law, and there's no equity in law anymore. They'll stop pretending even to 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 be a bar society, and they'll they'll even um, basically back in to to being nothing more than than uh, lackeys of the Roman cult. But when you take from them 
their claim, their false claim of canon law. They have nothing left, nothing. Yes, well, if that's what they're founded on, then uh, they wouldn't have nothing. Yeah, well, they are founded on that. Everything about them is based on that. You take that away, they have nothing. And that's what we're doing. Most excellent. It sounds very exciting indeed. Before you go, Frank, I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resend it because I did send an email there a couple, three weeks ago or maybe a little bit more about uh, becoming a member there with the One Heaven. And I never got a response. Maybe it got lost in the shuffle there, so I'll send it again if, it, if that's okay. Yeah, well, I've sent you an email, so send it to me, and, and I'll definitely get all that details. I'd be honoured, uh, Vic. Um, as I said, one own. of the hard things is, is to get a handle as to where this is all coming from. But um, as, as our discussion has said, um, these people claim superior standing, and they claim custom, and they claim history. So we have to be able to... Um, we have to be able to um, um, outposition them, and it in introduces um, some things that are a little bit hairy to start with. But at the end of the day, um, once it's established, uh, and that's what we're doing, then it ends the Bar Society's ability to defend. There is there is no defence when they are wholly opposite to law, rule of law. Um, what I'm hearing here is, is similar to when Jesus was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. He always referred to the old scriptures. Yes. Well, that was the strategy then. I mean, you know, it's, it's overdue. <laughs> but but the, the way I describe it to everybody is Think of Eucadia as, as a way of, of honouring and fulfilling something that we've all hoped would come, which is why does the kind of messianic wisdom or inspiration have to be in a flesh and blood being? Why can't it be a collective understanding? Yeah? Absolutely. Why can't it be something that we subscribe to as opposed to uh, an individual standing there and saying, I'm back? Because that, to me in a sense, kind of goes against feel you would think the, think the same, yeah? Oh, absolutely. It's about all of us, not me. <laughs> yeah, so, it, it, again, it's hard because people people want to have some, you know, particularly when your home has been taken and you see the evil of these people, you kind of hope for, this, for the sort of superhero to come through and go zap, 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 zap. In, in reality, I think it's, it's a bit like... Um, it's a bit like that parable with the talents, you know, we're all given different talents. Yes. And the one that's given most talents basically dug a hole and put them in the ground. Um, yep. I guess amongst us we have the intellectual capacity to our position really some pretty lazy people. I mean, cardinals are not cardinals are not um, PhDs, right? Some of them are, but they're not they're not they're not gods of knowledge. Um, they just know how to keep their system going. So sure, surely with a little bit of intellectual um, input and a whole lot of stubbornness, we can outposition it. Well, somebody on the first call tonight talked about how the banking people, they, they got the system and, they, and they're not reinventing a wheel here. They're just following the same system. And I read that myself a few years back. And I, and I thought that would be their weakness. Because if they're just doing the same thing again and again and again, to me that's not a great level of intelligence. That's right. That's right. I mean, um, so it's just, I guess, um, you 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 know you can't just play on their turf, but you've got to be prepared to come over and and consume it. And remember, every attack up until now, where you uh, people try and demonise them, only makes them stronger. For example. What people don't realise is that the pedophilia isn't weakening the church in the long term. It, it might in the short term, but it actually uh, reinvigorates the hardcore members because it, they're under attack, right? Right, yep. So, so the chance that pedophilia 
or histori historical evil of the Roman cult will in any way cause them to break apart is unre unreal, unreasonable. Um, it's only when they're consumed can you ultimately say that they have no validity, they hold no power. Very you know, cool. they claim to be the holy sea. They're not. They're neither holy nor are they the sea. <laughs> you know, un unless, unless groups say we are the holy sea. You aren't the holy sea. You're just a squatters. Yes. Unless you can establish that legal precedent, you can't get rid of them. Right. Yep, I would agree. I would agree in uh, the same as the principle of that what you resist persists. So pushing against something is not going to get us anywhere. <clears throat> so I agree with the concept of consuming. Well, we're, we're pro progressing. So... Guys, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to speaking again. Charlie, thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you, uh, Frank, for coming on. Yeah, thanks very much, Frank, for a pleasure to meet you on the phone here. And uh, I don't know how many thousands of miles there you are away, but it's the first time I've talked to <clears throat> someone that far away, and it's uh, been a pleasure. Uh, absolutely, so, uh, Vic, likewise. And um, I look forward to, to all, all, and um, I think we should, you know, uh, try and make it an uh, opportunity to talk again. Um, because I would love to be able to share things and listen. Everyone has valuable things they're doing and, and know people, but I particularly look forward to you guys being able to see what we're doing on canon law and pulling it apart and seeing how you feel when it comes out. Right. I, I do yeah, have one last question. One last question. Yeah. Um, are you, you're looking for as many people to be involved in this one heaven as possible. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. All right. So I'll, I'll be a good promoter here. <laughs> No, it'd be fantastic, Vic. And it, once you, yeah, as I said, not everyone understands it because they, 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 a lot of this stuff they think, well, who, who do you think you are? And they don't understand the, the, the battle that's going on. Yeah. Uh, no, no doubt about okay. it, but I've, I have sent a link out to a few people and, uh, friends in Quebec in particular who, strangely enough, uh, actually back in January, we were sitting down thinking of drafting something similar however not anywhere near as complex as uh, what you have and when i sent it to alex there he just he was just blown away because it's all here it's all done it's all ready to go <laughs> 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 and it's far more like i say far more in depth than uh, we had envisioned or even discussed it's, it's it's incredible and so uh clearly the divine is working through you well through all of us all of us because uh well that's true without you yeah yeah it's a it's a team effort <laughs> yeah, I'm not glory. I'm not putting you up on a pedestal, but uh, you're, you're you're doing your purpose there and very well. So, yeah, we'll be talking again, I'm sure. And um, like I said, I'll be your number one promoter up here, and um, look forward to our next conversation. Excellent. Thank you very Vic, much. And Vic, do you do you have um, is your uh, connection good enough to handle Skype on your computer? I, I'm on dial up here where I live, so I don't I don't have access to Skype. It doesn't work. Yeah, too slow for it. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, way way too slow. Mm -hmm. This the town I'm in has not upgraded their phone system yet. It's still on the old analog. Okay. Well, if, if uh, I, I hope that you can join in on our our calls uh, sometime, and uh, what we've uh, been doing with the people who uh, have uh, slow connections or something uh, like this is. Uh, uh, Nicholas or James will uh, phone them in on the uh, Skype subscription thing, so it gives unlimited phone connection, just like Charlie did here. Eh? So uh, we can easily do that. Uh, when, when is the next meeting coming up, uh, Charlie? Is that uh, that Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Um, well, I'd sure like to be a part of a part of that. So uh, if I'm we'll welcome be, to we'll join in there, I'd be honored. We'll be honoured honored to have you, Vic, and honoured to have um, all, all that are on the call, in fact. I and mean, I haven't spoken with with, with, um, with all, all of you yet, and I know that um, just we're only sort of touching base now, but um, we definitely, definitely want to, to bring people in who understand the, the objectives of what we're trying to accomplish uh, into the roles of notaries. Um, and really, there's, there's, there's opportunities for everybody. Um, it, it is about seeding knowledge. So, for example, the things that we're talking about with, um, with court remedy, um, yep. 
that really that knowledge on its own needs to get out as far and, and wide as possible because that's something that would help people right now that are facing court right now. No, no, no question, and that would start to uh, take away 